there, Peabody here, along with Sherman, the Wayback Machine, and Oil Can. Why the oil can, Mr. Peabody? We are going on a train ride, Sherman, and it is my motto, always to be prepared. I thought that was the Boy Scouts' motto. It is. They got it from me. Be that as it may, today the way back will take us way back to the year 1830. Our destination is the city of Baltimore, and our host is Peter Cooper. Who's he? He, Sherman, designed and produced the first locomotive engine in the United States. He called it the Tom Thumb, and we will be aboard as it races against a horse and carriage. In the hands of the way back, the transition to Baltimore was unbelievably swift. Before we knew it, we were in Peter Cooper's roundhouse. I suppose you've come to take my engineer's license from me. Engineer's license? We're here to help you win the race. There isn't going to be any race. Why not? Well, you see, I constructed the Tom Thumb, then I built the roundhouse around it. The problem is I neglected to provide an opening so that the Tom Thumb could get out. You mean there isn't any door? What's a door? I showed him by building one. Well, there you are, Mr. Cooper. You now have an exit for your locomotive. Sir, you're a genius. <laughs> you're so right. We assisted Peter Cooper in rolling the Tom Thumb up to the starting line of the race. It was then the judge announced the rules and regulations. Gentlemen, 50 miles due south is the town of Neutral Corners. The vehicle that gets there first will be the winner. While the judge loaded his pistol, I appraised our opposition. That horse looked as though he could run for a month without stopping, and as far as the driver was concerned, I was sure he would not only be a poor loser, but a bad winner. Wait till that fool Cooper tries to run that iron horse. He doesn't know I greased the tracks. <laughs> this ought to be a real slick race. At the sound of the gun, off to a very poor start. Something's wrong, Mr. Cooper. We're not getting anywhere. That's simply an illusion caused by excessive speed. Oh, 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 come on, why don't you push the thing? Poor Mr. Cooper, can't we do something? I spied a small group of nine-year-olds playing in a sand pile, and this, of course, gave me an idea. Twenty-five cents later, I was the proud owner of a toy shovel and a bucket full of sand. Uh, here, Sherman, dirty up the tracks. Huh? The sand will give us traction. Just keep throwing handfuls. Sure enough, the wheels stopped slipping, and in no time, we were highballing along. If we can maintain the speed, we'll catch up with that horse and buggy. That is, if we can get through the 50% tunnel. Why do they call 50%. Of course, it's only half finished. Before I could inquire as to the exact location of the tunnel, we were in it. I suppose they'll change the name of the tunnel now. Tell me, sir, are there any other obstacles ahead that you're aware of? Only the 50% bridge. I see. Is it called 50% bridge for the same reason as 50% tunnel? No. Oh, that's fortunate. They call it the 50% bridge because only the plans are half finished. As he spoke, I could see a wide chasm in the not-too-distant distance. The brakes, Mr. Cooper! Apply the brakes! What are brakes? The chasm was a mere 30 yards away, or else I would have filled him in on the sagacity of having a brake along. Instead, I boosted the acceleration to its maximum point, forcing the Tom Thumb to surge ahead at a breakneck pace. Runs beautifully, doesn't she? She not only ran beautifully, but jumped as well. Inside of a quarter of a mile, we had not only caught up with the horse and carriage, but were slowly pulling ahead. We're beating him! We're beating him! But strangely enough, the driver was wearing a smile, and for a good reason. Well, well, looks as though the 502 from Denver is right on schedule. Yes, and it's also right on our track. A head-on collision appeared to be in the making, and that's when I saw a side track just ahead with a switch by it. A quick, Sherman, hand me a piece of wood! Nice work, Mr. Peabody. Would have been terrible if the 502 had gone off schedule. By now, we were well ahead of our opposition, and neutral corners lay just ahead. In fact, the finish line was a scant 100 yards away, and that is when I turned the supply of steam off, causing the town thumb to roll to a stop. But we haven't crossed the line yet, Mr. Peabody. Uh, we'll cross a chairman after the horse and driver. You mean we're going to lose? We have to, Mr. Cooper. You see, according to history books, you lost this race. I did? That's awful! But history must always be truthful, Sherman. And by stopping the locomotive, we did give rise to one lasting expression. What's that, Mr. Peabody? Haven't you ever heard of... Honest Engine? <laughs> <laughs>